I'm back. Welcome back to the Jersey the King show. I am your host, Kevin Jersey the King Womble. And it's a great Thursday night here in Las Vegas, as well as around the United States. Thank you all for joining me here on the Jersey the King show live on Fuel Sports Network. If you haven't already, please go ahead and download the Fuel Sports Network app on your Roku and Amazon TV and devices today. You know what I mean? It's going down. We got a lot to talk about today. A lot of news to get into as far as Las Vegas sports goes. We got a lot of Aces news. We got some Vegas Thrill news, Las Vegas Lights news, Aviators news, and more. So let's get into it, man. Um, first of all, let's actually start in the W. Um, there's been some news going around in the W, man. There's, there's been a lot of uh, things happening in the W. Um, of course, you know, everybody's everybody who's a fan of Caitlin Clark is, you know, clamoring about what she's doing or not doing or what attention she's getting or not getting. And, of course, it's causing a rift in the – WNBA amongst the players, amongst the community, amongst the fans, amongst everything going on. And I have to take this time right now. And somebody, if you want, go ahead and turn this into a clip. Stephen A. Smith, ESPN, first take. I blame you guys. I blame you guys for all of this, for all this drama that's going on in the WNBA, mainly Stephen A. Smith. In the history of you doing what you do as a journalist, as a TV personality, the whole nine, you have never, ever in your career boosted up a women's basketball player to the level you are of Caitlin Clark. Never. Aside from maybe Cheryl Swoops or Cynthia Cooper back in the day. Since then, you have not hyped up any other player to the caliber of what you're doing, Caitlin Clark. And that goes to the lack of popularity and, and growth of popularity and viewership in the W until now. Let's keep it real. When... Stephen A. Smith started hyping up Caitlin, Smith, Caitlin Clark two years ago in college. 
the first year she went to the national championship and lost to Angel Reese in the LSU Tigers, he was hyping her up. And it started from there. And it got everybody interested in women's college basketball that wasn't interested before. Then last year, did the same exact thing. Instead, he hyped it up even more to the fact that we all knew that she was going to be the number one draft pick in the WNBA draft, which led to the WNBA draft viewership going from a little over 500,000 last year to this previous draft. The viewership was over 2.4 million viewers, live viewers watching the WNBA draft. And now that leads into the popularity that we have now. So, again, Stephen A. Smith, I blame you. And if you'd like to come on the show and debate about it, we can do so. But I'll call you out because I've watched First Take. I've watched the Stephen A. Smith show on YouTube. I've watched all of your content, and I've paid attention to the lack, the lack of conversations you have about the WNBA and you just sat here on first take and said it the reason why you haven't talked so much about the WNBA lately is because no one cared but here's the thing you have a voice sir you have a platform sir your voice carries weight sir your voice is influential sir so it would be easy for someone to hear you talk about the WNBA and say, I'm excited for it. I'm hyped for it. And you should get hyped for it and excited for it too. And talk about these players and what accomplishments they have accomplished. Because it's crazy how this season alone, Asia Wilson has become the best player on the planet and no one's talking about it. Not as much as myself or other Vegas writers and and, and, and journalists and broadcasters and, and some of the WNBA you know, broadcasters and analysts are talking about it. But when it comes to these sports talk shows on TV, no one's hyping up what Asia Wilson is doing as much as they're talking about Caitlin Clark. And it's not fair. I get the marketing strategy. I get it. But you have someone in every single game almost this season has either tied a record, set a record, or surpassed a milestone in her career, and she's only seven going on eight years in. But we're hyping up a rookie who hasn't really done anything. She's done something. She's done some things, a little bit, but she hasn't done enough. And then on top of that, everyone's mad. Oh, Caitlin Clark didn't make the Olympic national team. You want to know why? I'm going to say it right here, right now, on the Jersey the King show live on Fuel Sports Network. I'm going to tell you why Caitlin Clark did not make the Olympic team, and it has nothing to do with her race, it has nothing to do with her sexuality, it has nothing to do with her relationship with other players, it has nothing to do with any of that. It has everything to do with the fact that she had a national championship game to play in college and was not able to attend the national senior team training camp that they hold to assess rookies coming into the league. They hold a whole training camp type of thing where they assess these rookies coming into the league. She was unable to attend that because she had other matters to attend to in a national championship game. So there you have it. That is the exact reason why Caitlin Clark is not on the Olympic team. It has nothing to do with anything else. It is the fact that she was not able to attend that training session or that entire camp. She was not able to attend it. So with that, they can't just say, oh, well, because you were playing in the national championship, you know, we're going to let you slide. No, rules are rules. It doesn't matter. Hey, go win that national championship. We'll see you in four years. Because in four years, in four years, you'll be even better. So there you have it. But while all this news is going on around Caitlin Clark, and there's even controversy going on around Caitlin Clark as well with how her name is being utilized and weaponized. But aside from all that, Angel Reese has just set a record for the only rookie in WNBA history 
the first rookie in WNBA history to have seven straight double doubles. I'm just saying, we got to look at everything going on in the W, not just one player. We have to look at everybody. Everybody's doing something. Cameron Brink just got injured. She tore her ACL. She's out for the season. In her rookie season, why are we not talking about this? That's detrimental to the L.A. Sparks. She was well on her way to be in the conversation for Defensive Player of the Year as a rookie, as well as Rookie of the Year because of her defense alone. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about Caitlin Clark. Asia Wilson is the first player in WNBA history to average 35 or to get 35, I believe 15 and five, as far as 15 rebounds and, and five assists in a game. If I'm not mistaken, like I have the graphics for you. I'm just, we'll talk about that here in a minute, but I'm just saying, do you guys see the dynamic of what I'm trying to, the scope and dynamic of what I'm, I'm talking about here? We're, putting all of our eggs in one basket. What if something happens to Caitlin Clark this season like Cameron Brink? She just got injured and her season's over with. What if something like that were to happen to Caitlin Clark? Then what? People aren't going to watch anymore? That's not fair. That's not fair whatsoever. There's other players in this league who are damn good, and a, and a lot of them are better than Caitlin Clark. I'm sorry to say it that way, but she has a lot of development to go through. Her mid-range game, her driving to the basket, her defense, I could keep going. I'm just saying what she brings to the WNBA is her three-point shooting and how she does it. Her assists, of course, you have no choice. You're the point guard, and you got to get the ball out of your hand sometimes. But other than that, she has a lot of development under her belt that she needs to get taken care of before anybody can sit here and be like, oh, Caitlin Clark's the best player in the world. I get what you're saying. Chris, I get what you're saying. Thank you for tuning in. Look, I get what you're saying. Popularity is awesome. But guess what? Asia Wilson is popular. How Sabrina Ionescu is popular. Brianna Stewart, popular. I could keep going on naming names of women in the WNBA currently who are popular. The, whoa, whoa, will they lose if she's on the team? Are the Indiana Fever making noise right now? And Aaliyah Boston is getting overlooked by Caitlin Clark. And Aaliyah Boston's better overall. She may not shoot the three ball like Caitlin Clark does, but guess what? She has a mid-range, a post-game, rebounding, defense, assists. She could do it all. She just ain't a three-point shooter like that. She could shoot the mid-range. But let's be real. The Indiana Fever aren't making a whole bunch of noise right now. They're not. One of the best teams in the league? Let's be real. I'm sorry to say it for what it is. Popularity and money is great. That's awesome. That hype that she's bringing, that's being brought up for her to the W, yes, it helped bring, it helped make the charter flights go faster to where that is now a thing in the W when it should have been a thing a long time ago. It's just the owners in the league being cheap. Sorry. My personal opinion. But I'm just saying, let's look at it. Clark's popularity is elite. Yes, it is elite. You want to know why it's elite? Because it was hyped up to that. Let's stop. Let's stop and look at what it really is. Let's stop and look at what it really is. Because if Paige Beckers was in this draft, Caitlin Clark would be an afterthought. That's how good Paige Beckers is. And she proved it by winning the national championship against Caitlin Clark. Angel Reese and her team was better than Caitlin Clark and her team when they won the national championship. Caitlin Clark went to back-to-back -back national championships and couldn't get the job done. So, yes, her popularity is great, but that's because the media hyped it up. Just saying. But shout-out to Angel Reese. 
for becoming the first rookie with seven straight double doubles. Caitlin Clark hasn't done that in points and assists. Just saying. There's other players out there doing doing things and on elite levels. And the number one player doing it is Asia Wilson. But we're gonna jump into a quick commercial break and when we come back. We got more a more WNBA news. We get into some Aces news. We got some Vegas Thrill news, Nighthawks news, Lights FC news, as well as some Aviators news. Yes, getting a little bit into baseball. Trying to get my trying to get my my Vegas sports all covered on every aspect, guys. So when we come back, we'll be getting into that. Don't go nowhere. This is the Jersey of the King show live on Fuel Sports Network. Don't go nowhere, y'all. <laughs> Welcome back to the Jersey of the King show live on Fuel Sports Network. For the break, we were talking about WNBA and my take on everything that's going on. Like I said, I totally blame the media. I totally blame Stephen A. Smith. I totally blame First Take, ESPN, other team, you know, shows that that have speak have spoken on that. Oh, sorry, wrong graphic. Uh, make sure you guys go and follow the Jersey of the King show socials. Make sure you follow Fuel Sports Network as well. And there you have it all there. It is now the with an E on Facebook for the Jersey of the King show. So make sure you guys go and drop a follow on all the Jersey of the King show social media as well as drop a subscribe on the YouTube channel. And please, please go and follow the Fuel Sports Network socials as well all the channels subscribe to the youtube channel you need to get those numbers up i believe we're like at 147 so let's try and get those subs those subs up on on youtube as well y'all but yeah man like i said it's it's something that just irks my nerves because there's so much talent in the WNBA, and listen When Chris, I, I get what you're saying. Caitlin Clark's popularity is elite. So is Asia Wilson's. So is so many other players in the WNBA. Stephen A. Smith has not hyped up these players like he's hyped up Caitlin Clark. Let's keep it real. If he would have hyped up Brianna Stewart like this, 
if he would have hyped up Asia Wilson like this, if he would have hyped up Sabrina Ionescu like this, because let's keep it real. Sabrina Ionescu was doing all these three-point shooting, all this crazy three-point shooting before Caitlin Clark was doing it in college or around, around, right around the same time. So let's not act like she hasn't been in a daggone commercial with Steph Curry himself before Caitlin Clark was even really that big of a name. Let's not act like she's really bringing something different in the three-point shooting that Sabrina Ionescu isn't already doing and some of these other players aren't already doing. I mean, stop it. Let, let's keep it real. We got to stop looking at it for the, the – the, we got to stop per, taking the media's perception and running with it because it's not the right perception to have. There are so many other players doing what Caitlin Clark is doing and doing it better. That's just the reality of the situation. The thing is, they chose her to be that marketing golden ticket. Not sure why, but they did. And the problem with it is they're not recognizing anybody else in this league. That's the problem. You're only talking about one player and one player only. And when you talk about other players, it's that quick. It's that quick, literally. So take it for take what these the media is saying with a grain of salt and look at it for yourself. Period. Now, moving on. The WNBA All Star voting has begun. On June 13th is when it opened up. The voting ends June 29th. So make sure you get your votes in for your favorite players to make the All-Star Game East and West rosters. Also, June 16th, which has already passed, unfortunately, June 22nd and June 27th are double vote days. So whenever you, if you vote on these days, your votes will count as double. You can vote daily for up to 10 players on vote.wnba.com and the WNBA app, four guards and six front court players. All players on our active WNBA roster will be eligible for voting. So make sure you guys go and cast your votes for the WNBA All-Star Game. I'm excited for this game. It's going to be in Phoenix this season. So I hope there's a huge crowd. I hope there's a big turnout for this game this year. It will be very, very lovely to see that. I'm not even going to lie, but go ahead. You know, there's a, here's a game that you can definitely vote for Caitlin Clark to be in. So, you know, get her that rookie voting and get her in the all-star game. There you have it right there and there, you know, go to WNBA or vote.wnba.com to do so. Now, moving on, the aces bounce back in a, Beautiful fashion. Oh, my goodness. It was an amazing game. It was a great game. It was a great game. We were clicking on all cylinders, baby, because our point God is back. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me hold on. Pump my brakes real quick. It has been a struggle this season. We are only seven and six. We got blown out a couple uh, last week, a couple games ago against Minnesota, 100 to 86. We lost. To Phoenix, um, I believe we be uh, yes, if I'm not mistaken, we lost to Phoenix by four, like 98 to 92. Uh, we lost to Brianna Stewart, Sabrina Ionescu, and the Liberty in an emotional game because, at, well, the post game was emotional for Asia Wilson at least because we had a lead in that game, a decent lead, and we lost. Ended up losing 90 to 82. It was it was a heartbreaking loss, but. Our point God, our point God, the queen, she's back and it showed, it showed, it showed so much. I'm, if you guys go and check my, um, I didn't, I don't have enough time. I didn't have enough time today to get all the highlights and everything up here because there's a lot, but when I tell you it was a great game, 94 to 83 victory over the Seattle storm. When I tell you it was a great game game y'all Chelsea came in her first assist was behind the back pass to Jackie like are you kidding me behind the back 
you come in the league or you come in the season debut game. And the first thing you're going to do is say, you know what? I ain't going nowhere. I just was hurt <clears throat> behind the back. No look. Like she was dropping dimes, y'all. She was dropping dimes. And Jackie Young. Mm, 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 mm. We talk a lot about Asia Wilson. We talk a lot about Kelsey Plum. We talk a lot about Chelsea Gray. But Jackie Young has been that silent assassin of a all-star. She's been that quiet all-star who's just been doing her thing, setting records of her own. Like, when I tell you the Aces are doing things regardless of whatever else is going on in the league, listen, look at this. The Aces are the first team to sell out. Literally, to sell out. All home games in the season. First team ever. In WBA history. First team to do it. And I think it has something to do with the fact that we have the best, one of the best teams in the WNBA. For one. And for two, we're in Vegas, baby. We have the best home crowd ever. I'm just saying. We got the best home crowd in W. I don't care what nobody's saying. But on top of all that, despite the up and down start to this season, our players are making history, y'all. Straight history. Look at that. Kelsey Plum. Fourth all-time, most points in franchise history. Jackie Young just set a record for 10 three-pointers in one quarter. First time in WNBA history. Kelsey Plum, second in franchise history or franchise leader in assists. Asia Wilson, 15th now in all-time career leaders in the WNBA in blocks. Asia Wilson as well. The first player ever. Do I have to say it again, y'all? Ever. <laughs> we we not going to just overlook my girl, y'all. We're not going to overlook the queen. First player ever in WNBA history to average 25, 10, and 5 over any nine-game span. Also, 14 straight games with double figures in points, double figures in rebounds. I mean, come on now. Chelsea Gray, first game back, eclipsed her career assists. Asia Wilson, 4,000 career points. On top of what Kelsey Plum and them have done earlier this season, like every single game, something is being done this season. Every game. We can't ignore that. We cannot ignore that, y'all. And it's being ignored. It really, really is. It really, really is. And it's it's despicable. I'm sorry. But even with the seven and six record, we're still one of the best teams in the W. And with that, roster moves have been made. A roster change has been made. Thank you, Emma Cannon, for your time. Second stunt or stint with the, uh, the Aces. Emma, Can Emma Cannon was re-waived, and the Aces signed rookie, if I'm not mistaken, Jessica Carter, who was waived by her drafted team. And listen, we're looking at, I believe she's 6'3", between 6'3 and 6'5". We're looking at more paint presence for this team. We need it. With players like BG, and I, and I um, asked Coach this the other night, and I did post it on Facebook, what she, what she commented on and responded it with. But as far as, you know, bringing in Jessica Carter and bringing in that height and that that depth to the the bench and the offenses or in defense itself, 
you know, just to the team, to this roster. It's huge. And then you got to imagine when KB, Kirsten Bell, comes back from injury and this team is completely healthy, just imagine what we're going to do. In the game last night, we have five players in double figures. Five players in double figures. Just saying. We have one of the best teams. We were clicking on all cylinders. We were playing inside and out. You know, we were playing through our defense. We were making defensive stops, transitioning over to the offense and winning scores. We were transitioning from that offense back onto defense and getting stops again. You know what I mean? We were just making things happen. We held Jewel Lloyd to, I think, one point in, like, the first quarter. Literally. We held Aneke Agumake to, like, five or ten points or, like, five points in the first half. It was a really, really good defensive game from us. One of our best defensive game all season, if not the best defensive game all season. And it's just like having Chelsea Gray back on that court was huge for us. It really, really was. So I'm just saying, man, we got our point guard back. We'll see, you know, how how her minutes start to increase. And that'll let us know really the timetable of her injury, you know what I mean? And and coming back from it, how she's, what percent she's really at, you know, coming back from that injury. We've seen her get a few minutes in, in this past game. Let's see what we get from our Friday versus Connecticut because that's our next opponent tomorrow taking on Connecticut. I will not be able to be at the game. I do have to work, but I will be attending the post-game pro- press conference on Zoom. So make sure you guys – Tune in to the post-game press conference on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're in Vegas on the Silver State Sports and Entertainment Network. Dig what I'm saying? But we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to get into some Nighthawks news. We're going to get into some Vegas Thrill news as well. Some Lights news and some Aviators news. So sit tight. We'll be right back with more of the Jersey the King show right here live on Fuel Sports Network. Yiddy. Back to the Jersey the King show live right here on Fuel Sports Network. Now, 
we're going to transition from WNBA, from basketball, and we're going to get it to some football. <sighs> the last couple games from our Nighthawks, man, we were looking at a three-game skid. I'm not even going to lie to you. But we bounce back, baby. And here's the loss last week that, that gave us our third straight loss in overtime. And the crazy thing is two out of those three losses were in overtime. But J.J. came back, Jerome Johnson, starting at the QB position. He wasn't injuring anything. It was just Jorge Reno was, you know, performing better on the field. And um, we get a bounce back win, a huge bounce back win, 53-39 over Duke City. Yeah, we know it's Duke City, but still at the end of the day, the Nighthawks needed this W. Um, we're currently sitting at the second spot in the um, Western Conference. So when it comes to, you know, needing a W, every win counts. Like, every win matters. We are currently 9-3. and three. Or eight and three, excuse me, six and two in conference play. Um, Bay Area is nine and two, eight and two in conference play. So we're looking at one game behind Bay Area for you know number one seed in the conference. No, or excuse me, number one in the conference as far as record wise. We're we're sitting two games back. As far as just being number one in the overall conference, I believe we're still two games back. We just have to get another W against Bay Area. And this upcoming Saturday, we have a game against Northern Arizona. We're back home after a road trip and taking on Northern Arizona at home. I will be in attendance for this game on Saturday um, because it is an evening game. So I will be in attendance for the game. We'll make sure to get my behind down there. You know what I mean? But uh, it's going to be a great game. I'm excited for it. It's a must-win game for us. Playoff push is adamant, or it's real. It's very, very real right now. Um, also, my uh, my spider senses was tingling. In, in, um, <laughs> uh, not only do we need this playoff win or this win to for the playoffs but we eliminated duke city with that win over them so we need to finish the season strong and i'm i'm hoping that you know we can get the job done this saturday against northern arizona and you know get a two game win streak going back and 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 really finishing out the season strong with a win out. Let's see if we can win it out. You know what I mean? Let's see if we can win out and and, and get it popping, man. Real quick, into some Vegas thrill news. Well, before we get into the Vegas thrill news. So, this Saturday, Vegas at home in Henderson, Lee's Family Forum. You will see me there. We will be um, hosting the Northern Arizona Rattlers in a, home, in a must-win home game. So, make sure you're there if you're in Vegas. And I'll see you there. But let's get into some Vegas throw news for all my volleyball fans. The annual back to school bash is going on now. Help support Title I students in Henderson. You can donate supplies, drop off your school supplies at the Vegas Aces volleyball facility. Spread the word, tell your friends, family, and co workers. Drop off addresses 123 Pancho Via Drive in Henderson, 8910 or 89012, excuse me. Or you can go to www.vegasthrill.com for more information or call 725-251-5413. And it's now through July 19th. So make sure you guys definitely go and show your love and donate if you're in the Vegas area. Also, in the Pro Volleyball Federation, free agency has started. Um, as of June 1st, players are able to or excuse me, yeah, players' are, contracts are open for negotiation. And as of June 30th, players will be eligible to sign with a team. So we are getting 
ready already for the off season in the PBF. Make sure you guys stay tuned right here to the Jersey King show for more and any information on Vegas through signings through free agency or contract negotiations, if any. Now, into the lights on my soccer fans out there, lights FC fans. Man, the lights are searching for OW after two straight draws. Um, last week, they played Ludon and ended in a draw with a beautiful goal from Corey Bennett. Beautiful goal. The assist was beautiful. The, the assist was beautiful, but the goal was even more beautiful because it was behind the back. No look. Just tapped it in. He didn't even look. He just kicked it. He literally watched the ball come and then he just kicked it. He just timed it right and kicked it. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful thing. It definitely was. Then we took on Colorado Springs switchbacks. And of course, another draw. Three three though. Scored three goals, but ended in a draw, man. It's it's like we can, we can, we're we're getting there. It's like each game we're getting better and better and better and better. And I say that for a reason. Um, next game up for the lights is the Memphis FC Club. We will be taking on them at Cashman June 22nd, this Saturday. And uh, whenever I am able to get my credentials with the Lights FC Club, I will start attending games at Cashman when I'm able to, you know, because there may be some confliction with games at Cashman plus games at Lee's Family Forum. So trying to get to all these different games, plus a Saturday game with the Aces, there, there may be so much going on. And then I work – from 11 at night to 7 in the mornings, Wednesday through Sunday. So Saturday morning when I get off work, I stay up just to do the Gridiron Show, guys. You know what I mean? I'm dedicated to you guys. So just saying. But the reason why I say what I said about, you know, we're getting better each game is because here you have it. Hardest working player. You know what I mean? Player of the month, Mr. Valentin Noel is your USL player of the month. But on top of that, congratulations to Valentin. Big contributor to the team right now. Can't even lie. He's been huge with the growth of this team and moving forward, trying to accomplish more W's. But on top of that, your Las Vegas Lights FC club is your USL week 14 team of the week. With these two games that they played, don't get me wrong, they ended in draws, but just what you've seen from the lights, the growth is there. The future of this team being better is there. You can tell. You can see it. It's right out there in the open, man. And I'm really excited for the remainder of this season. I really, really am. But like I said, we're looking to bounce back and search for a, a, a well-needed W because all these draws aren't going to help our claim when it comes to the USL playoffs or the championships. You know, it, it's not going to help our cause. Um, but it's a young team, you know. And if you guys aren't familiar with the owner of the Las Vegas Lights, football club it is actually jose batista the former mlb star yes he actually owns the team so i have to commend that man for what he's doing he's giving he's given us here in vegas a good soccer club for this usl league he has really given us a good soccer club he's putting together a good team it's just growth and maturity that's all it comes down to growth and maturity and just the team chemistry getting better and just the players overall getting better. You know what I mean? That's just all that it comes down to. So when I look at this team and I see, you know, these draws or some of these losses, but I watch the game and I see what they're doing on the field on this pitch. I'm like, you know what? There's, there's something there and it's going to show, you know what I mean? It's definitely going to show in the near future and hopefully in the right time 
team takes form at the right part of the season. You know what I mean? I'm really, really excited for that. Um, when we come back from this commercial break, though, we are going to get into some aviators news. And for the first time ever on the Jersey King show, I am going to be talking about the PFL, the Professional Fighters League, because we have the PFL regular season going on and we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. So when we come back from this commercial break, we're going to get into some aviators news really quickly and then get into some PFL news and get up out of here because I got to go to work. But, you know, this is the Jersey King Show live on Fuel Sports Network. Here for your viewing pleasure of all things Vegas sports. Welcome to Sin City. We'll be right back right here on Fuel Sports Network. I've made it back to Earth with the cargo intact. The game-changing, time-sensitive payload is none other than the revolutionary energy flavor we've all been waiting for. Introducing Merc Mayhem, Cherry Limeade. Merc Clan played a crucial role in securing this energy flavor. And together, we've unlocked the future of power. Merc Mayhem is not just a drink. It's a statement. A fusion of relentless energy and bold flavor. The secret is out. Merc Mayhem is set to redefine the energy landscape, leaving ordinary drinks in its cosmic dust. Get ready for a taste explosion that matches Merc Clan's unparalleled power. Join the revolution, and let's unleash Merc Mayhem upon the world. Astronaut M signing off. Welcome back to the Jersey the King Show live on Fuel Sports Network. My bad, I messed up on the commercial. My bad, y'all. Oops. No, just <laughs> I did though. But welcome back. Um, before we went into break, like I said, I told you guys we were gonna get into some aviators news as well as some PFL news. But before we do that, if you guys have any questions you want to ask, it can be about Vegas sports, it could be about movies questions in general ask me what you want send your questions in to the jersey king show at jersey king at gmail.com that will come right to me i'll be able to ask and answer your questions right here on the show just like i do on the gridiron every saturday so again make sure you send in your questions to the jersey the king show at jersey the king at gmail.com and we'll get your your questions asked and answered on the show. Now, let's get right into it. Now, the Aviators, they are actually playing right now. They are in a game right now against Tacoma in, a, I believe, a three- or five-game series. I didn't get all the information. I do apologize. But they're coming off of a wonderful, wonderful seven out of the last 10 games winning the last seven or winning seven out of the last 10 games. And I got to say, they're doing very, very well to the point where one of our pitch, our players, Armando Alvarez 
is named Player of the Week for the week of June 11th through June 16th. And he also has a 16-game hit streak going on, which is the longest in the Pacific Coast League in the AAA division. Now, currently in six games. This is just in six games. He's got eight hits, one stolen base, five base on balls, which are walks, uh, two home runs, and five runs batted in, which are RBIs. His batting average is 400, y'all, and he's eight for 20, but he has a batting average of 400. He's got a slugging percentage of 800 and an OPS on-base percentage. Um, or excuse me, uh, OPS of 1.320. That is impressive numbers. And that is the reason why this young man was named player of the week in the PCL league. Um, I mean, (laughs) what can you say? That's a, that's an amazing stretch of six games right there. That's great play in that six game stretch batting 400 your your batting average is 400 in six games that's pretty damn good y'all pretty damn good so congratulations to armando alvarez for being named player of the week for the week of june 11th through the 16th in the pcl in triple a baseball pcl is the pacific coast conference or league excuse me so shout outs to them that's huge that's major i gotta you know definitely give credit where credit is due man that's huge for them that's that's literally huge for them now also let's get into this pfl news now right now these are your current standings for the light heavyweight and the lightweight divisions in the professional fighter league, professional fighters league. Now, if you're not familiar with professional fighters league, they are an MMA promotion. They are a major MMA promotion who have a league style set up instead of a year round style like the UFC does. And when I say that, I mean these players fight more often than the UFC fighters. They go through a regular season. As you see right now, their standings, those are regular season standings. And you see how the players have points? The reason why they have points is because they get rewarded points for every fight. So you fight, if I'm not mistaken, you fight two fights in the regular season, right? You fight two fights in the regular season, and then you have, then you also have, uh, Well, it depends on, excuse me, it depends on if, de- depends on if you advance, right? So you have two regular s- season matches. And if you advance based on your points, then you will move on to the playoffs, right? So I know I have this graphic up here a long time, but I want you guys to really get to know the names of these fighters because you may recognize some of them. because of them formerly being in, you know, the UFC or Bellator because the PFL has just purchased, acquired Bellator last year. And with them acquiring Bellator last year, they acquired all their fighters and championship belts and all that, right? So this is how the point system works. Let me just break this down to you guys. So with every win, you get three points. If you get a first round finish, like a knockout or a submission, you get three extra points. So that's considered a quick six, right? You get 
a second round stoppage, you get two extra points. You get the Fab Five. If you get a third round stoppage, you get one extra point. You know, so you get the four pack of points. And if you get a decision win, you just get your three points. You don't get any bonus points at all. So that's the major downfall to getting a decision win in the PFL. Your goal is to get finishes. Your goal is to get more points than any other fighter in your division. Now, here's the card coming up for tomorrow night for the regular season events. This is round two, of, if I'm not mistaken, of – well, not round two, but this is – um. The rest of the regular season bouts for currently the lightweight and light heavyweights. So as you see, we have Brent Primus taking on Solomon Renfro. Sadabusi, who is a middleweight champion in the PFL, taking on Tom Brees. And this is just your early card. You have Gatsi Rabadanov. Taking on Elvin Espinoza, Michael Duford taking on Adam Piccolotti, Anthony Romero, you might know that name, taking on Sergio Calcio, Andrew Sanchez taking on Carl Albrechtston, and Brian Zercher taking on Julian Ruiz. And then your main card, Rig, my boy Rig, if you're watching, your boy Clay Collard is back. And he's in the PFL and he's back in the PFL from that injury. And he's going to be taking on Mads Burnell in the main event. Your co-main is Impa Kasunganai, a current middleweight champion as well, or excuse me, current lightweight champion in, or light heavyweight champion in the PFL. Taking on Jacob Nidal, former Bello, Bellator fighter and Bellator champion. At lightweight, Patricky Pitbull was taking on Bruno Miranda, Rob Wilkinson, former light heavyweight champion in the PFL, taking on John Silverio, or excuse me, Silvera, and Dovlak, Dovlet Yagsimorodov taking on Simon Beyong. Hey, I said it. I did that, y'all. Give me credit. And Antonio Carlos, taking, Carlos Jr. taking on Alex Palazzi. It's going to be a stacked card, man. Make sure you guys tune in so you can get familiar with how the PFL works. Again, go and follow the Jersey the King socials. You know where it is, the Jersey the King show everywhere. Go follow the Fuel socials. Coming up after the Jersey, Jersey the King show tonight on Fuel Sports Network will be a special time and episode. Because of the game yesterday, the Girl Chat Sports show will be live tonight right after the Jersey the King show. So make sure you tune in. You keep continue to tune in to Fuel Sports Network right after the show is over because they'll be coming on live. I got to get up out of here, y'all. I love y'all. I will see y'all next Thursday. I will also see y'all Saturday for the Gridiron. Holla at your boy. I love y'all. Peace out.